At Heirloom Creations, we are always being asked, what is the easiest way to put binding on my quilt? So today we're gonna to show you the easiest, fastest, down and dirty way from start to finish in six easy steps. We're gonna start off by actually cutting your binding. You can cut it between two and a half and two and one quarter inch wide strips. You can go ahead and use your rotary cutter and mat and cut apart. Or if you're like me, you choose the Shape Cut Plus, this will allow you to cut multiple strips at one even pass, just one right after the other. Just line up your fabric and away you go. To sew all the strips together end to end to form the binding, we're gonna stitch along the diagonal from corner to corner here. Now, if you don't wanna draw a line, try one of the new Clearly Perfect Angles. This is a item you can purchase. It sits right at your sewing machine. It's gonna cling, get it lined up here cling to the bed of your machine or to your cabinet. And this line here is what I'm gonna actually follow. I'm gonna just put this in, start to stitch. When I get the needle lined up where I need to start, I'm going to then look down here at the lower corner and keep my eye at this point. That way, I have a perfectly 45 degree stitching line on every single binding piece. When you get one done, just bring the tail over, do right side up, Bring your next one in and keep sewing until you connect all the pieces together. Lay them perpendicular, line it up, put it in, watch down below here, line it down the center, and away you go. Perfect every time. After you've sewn all your strips together, trim apart the pieces about a quarter inch away. You can use scissors or a rotary cutter. Next, we're gonna find our end and start to press. We're gonna press the wrong sides together to form our binding. When you get to a seam, press it open. That way it will lay nice and flat next to your quilt. A quick tip for storing your binding until you need it, wrap it around a ruler and then tie it up and it will stay nice and neat until you're ready to apply it to your quilt. To apply the binding to the quilt, start by attaching the walking foot to the sewing machine. Take the binding raw edges and match it to the raw edges of your quilt. Take and open up this top edge. We're gonna fold down a a diagonal corner here and then recreate that into its binding shape. What we've just made is a little pocket. When we get all the way back around to the other side, we're gonna just take the end, tuck it in here and sew it closed. That's how it e easy it is to start and stop uh, in this particular method. So we're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. Just gonna start stitching. I'm gonna actually open this up a little bit. When I get a ways, go into it, I'm gonna stop, lift up my presser foot, kinda of come back on top so I can start stitching all the way down to the corner. As I get to the corner, this is the part that people always ask us about. We wanna stop a quarter inch from the end of our quilt. With that, so whether you put a pin in there and mark it, and just make sure you don't go over that amount. I'm gonna take one more stitch, and then I'm gonna reverse, just to give it a little bit of a security stitch right there. When you pull it out, completely remove it from the sewing machine, and now we're ready to create that mitered corner. The first thing you wanna do is actually twist the fabric of the binding all the way up this way. You know you've done it right because the edge of the quilt will match up with the binding raw edge. Kind of finger press that down, then take the whole binding and bring it towards you, even making the fold of it even at the top of the quilt. Bring this back into the machine. You don't have to worry about where you start. I usually start in a ways and then just reverse back. That gives me a nice secure stitch and continue on around. Ready to see how we connect the end point to where we started? As we approach, we're gonna go ahead and just trim that down so it's gonna tuck into that little pocket we created. Line up the raw edges, tuck it in, 
never to be seen ever again. Now that is a no math method. Connect to where you started with your stitching. And then let's see how Next, we did. Next, we're just gonna take it to the iron, press out along the front side of the quilt. When you get to the corners, you're gonna see that that extra little fold you made is just enough to perfectly miter the binding to the back of the quilt. Now, so a little trick is to use a high contrast thread in the bobbin, and then that way, if you are using and doing hand stitching, you can easily see that line of thread and know where to roll the back to. So you can hand stitch this closed, or if you'd like, put that back in the sewing machine, use an edge stitch foot or a walking foot with the stitch in the ditch option, and just stitch down through the ditch, catching the back all the way around once again. Okay, I have a little confession to make. When I was putting this binding on, this particular quilt, when it was finished, it found itself with the back and the batting all even with the front of the quilt, which is not normally the way it is. When possible, and, and you'll probably find yourself with batting and back extending past your binding, is you wanna go ahead and put your binding on before you do any trimming of the batting and back away from the quilt. So after you've done your stitching and your corners, you're gonna go ahead and trim down to a quarter inch away from the final quilt and binding edge. See how we've left a little bit of the batting showing all the way around our quilt? What that will do is give just a little extra filler to the binding when you go and turn that to the back side. See how much fuller that is when it's all said and done? That is the way a good binding should look.